In the last read aloud, you learned about cells and tissues. Similar cells join together in groups to form tissues. In the same way, similar tissues join together to form organs. Organs are parts of the human body that perform special jobs for the body. Organs are made up of groups of tissues. All organs are made up of different kinds of tissues that help them do their particular jobs well. Your eyes and ears are organs. Your heart and lungs are organs. Your stomach is an organ too. Which of your body organs is the largest? It's your skin. Does that surprise you? You've looked at skin cells through the microscope, and we've talked about the epithelial tissue that these cells form. So while it may seem odd to think of skin as an organ, it does make sense, doesn't it? Strong epithelial tissue, also made up of tiny cells, forms an organ with a very large protective covering, the skin. You've learned about four different types of body tissues. What are the names of all four types of body tissues? One is epithelial, the tissue that forms your skin. What are the other three? The other three are connective, muscle, and nervous tissue. Each different type of tissue is made up of similar cells that do the same jobs. All body tissues are made up of cells. And all body organs are made up of tissues, cells, tissues, organs. The systems of the body are organ systems. An organ is a part of the body with a clearly defined function or job to perform. Most organs are involved in just one body system. There are ten major organ systems in the human body. Which body systems are in charge of helping you move? You may have learned last year about the skeletal and muscular systems. Your skeletal system is made up of bones and other organs. Its skeletal tissues work together with the smooth muscle tissues in your muscular system to make your body move. What does the circulatory system do? It circulates or moves your blood around to all parts of your body. Your heart and blood, made up of cells and tissues, are the organs of your circulatory system. The respiratory system includes your lungs, organs made up of cells and tissues that control your breathing. What does the nervous system do? It sends messages along the spinal cord to the brain. These two organs, the spinal cord and the brain, are both made up of nervous tissues full of tiny nerve cells. Which organ system includes your stomach? It's the digestive system. Your stomach works closely with other organs, each made up of different types of tissues and different types of cells to perform different types of jobs. Soon you will be able to name all of the other organs that work together with your stomach to help digest or break down your food. Sometimes your organs are a combination of different types of tissue. The stomach is one of these organs. It is made up of many layers, including all four main types of tissue. These tissues play a very important role in the digestion of your food. We'll take a quick peek at part of your digestive system now. Let's look at the inside of your stomach to see where these four types of stomach tissue live. From inside to outside, the first layer of tissue that you see is epithelial tissue. Remember what epithelial tissue does. It is tightly packed, arranged in a layered sheet to cover and protect the organ. Beneath the epithelial tissue is connective tissue, primarily blood that carries or connects nutrients to the cells. Remember, nutrients are nourishing substances necessary for growth and the maintenance of life. Smooth muscle tissue lies underneath the connective tissues and helps to move food around in the stomach. Stomach muscles squeeze together about three times per minute 
continuing to squeeze whether there is food in your stomach or not. It is the squeezing of these muscles that produces the loud rumbling you sometimes hear when your stomach is nearly empty. The fourth type of body tissue, nervous tissue, is located in the stomach wall. It constantly sends signals to the brain and makes sure that all other parts are working smoothly. Every organ in your body depends upon other organs to work in the right way. When you study the digestive system more thoroughly in the next lesson, you will see that the stomach could not perform the job of the entire system on its own. It needs help. Have you ever heard of the liver? Your liver is an organ located above your stomach that your stomach depends upon to do its job. Together with two other organs known as the pancreas and the gallbladder, the liver produces digestive juices to help break down your food. Your liver is one of the largest organs of the body, working as part of several different systems to perform different body functions. You cannot live without your liver. Next time, you will learn more about the very important role that the liver plays in the digestive system. Organs depend upon one another. So do the body's systems. Each system depends upon the other systems to make sure that your body works properly. For example, blood is carried to all parts of your body through the circulatory system. The circulatory system depends upon the respiratory system to get oxygen into the bloodstream. Your blood would have no nutrients in it without the help of the digestive system to break down your food. Working together, these different systems provide your cells with the food and oxygen they need so that energy can be supplied to all your other systems. Without energy, your muscles couldn't move your bones. Without energy, your brain could not think. When organs stop working properly, body systems break down. The body stops functioning well and you become ill. If your lungs collapse or cave in, there is not enough oxygen to feed or nourish your cells with the things they need to live and grow. If your heart stops, it will no longer pump blood with the necessary nutrients to other parts of your body. When you're doing things like riding your bike or playing certain sports, it's very important to protect your head by wearing a helmet. A head injury might result in damage to your brain, and this might prevent messages from going back and forth between the brain and the nervous system and other parts of your body. A donor is a person who donates or gives something. Have you ever heard of an organ donor? Believe it or not, an organ donor gives away an organ to save another person's life. Fortunately, modern science has made it possible to replace damaged organs. Sometimes when people are very ill but still have healthy body organs, they decide to donate their healthy organs to others when they die. Sometimes it is even possible for people to spare an organ and go on living healthy lives themselves. For example, you have two kidneys. Kidneys are a pair of organs located in your lower back. You will learn more about these two very important organs in another lesson. Your kidneys clean poisonous waste from the blood flowing through the body, preventing many different types of disease. You can live a healthy life with only one kidney, so this is one organ that can be donated to someone who needs a kidney. Doctors today can take a kidney from one person's body and transplant or move it into another person's body to keep that person alive. Doesn't that sound like a miracle? I think so. Cells, Tissues, Organs, Systems The human body is organized into four different levels. Cells are the building blocks of the body. Without cells, there would be no body tissue, no body organs, and no body systems. In fact, without cells, there would not be a single living person or thing on earth. The next time we gather together, 
We'll discuss the organs that work together to digest or break down your food. Today we looked inside your stomach, but your stomach is only one part of the food's journey as it travels through your body. See you next time.